the number one worst mistake I've made in my now almost 4K Rocket League hours is no doubt using terrible settings. From putting hundreds of hours into playing KBM, to changing and learning my controller binds two times over, to not realizing I had twice the input lag I should have just because of a bad controller, I've done it all. So to save you the time, energy, and headache of dealing with bad settings, I want to update you all on all the do's and don'ts when it comes to settings in Rocket League. This is my ultimate settings guide. Also, I originally made this video just for the people in my coaching program, but today I want to give it away for free because this last season of my coaching program, we actually overbooked our staff and we've had to turn away hundreds of people who've DM'd my Discord. To make things up, my team and I decided to give away free coaching calls to anyone who DMs us from this video for our upcoming season. So if you're gold through champ ranked watching and you're on the hunt for GC, DM me on Discord with the keyword free and we can get you a free coaching call set up. My Discord is first linked down below. Otherwise, enjoy the video. Starting first tab, gameplay. Really, the gameplay tab, there's not much you're going to have to worry about. You want all your speeds set to high, client send rate, server send rate, bandwidth limit, um, all that stuff. You can experiment with input buffer. Um, just a little aside, uh, input lag is really, really important in Rocket League. And I have found personally the lowest input lag when I play on PS4 controller. That's just me. I've tried Xbox. I've tried PS4. I've tried PS5. I recommend you use PS4 and you use CSTS. That's what I found the best results with. Um, but some people have said default or STS work just fine. I think you should just do CSTS and PS4 if you can. That's really all you have to worry about for the gameplay tab. For the camera tab, camera settings, basically how you view the game, of course, you probably know this. Camera settings are pretty much cracked. I'll give you the most common ranges on Liquipedia that all the pros use, as well as mine. First off, camera preset. If you do have Bacchus mod, this is one thing you can check really easily. You'll have access to all of the pro settings. So you can literally click and see and get like presets made of exactly what the pros use and, and get those applied. Personally, I recommend you just use stock settings, but if you want to experiment with, you know, Justin's or, you know, whoever's, you can use the camera preset tab. But speaking from my experience, uh, camera shake, of course, just turn this off. Field of view. Field of view, this is basically cracked. Um, you should you should use 110. Some pros are starting to popularize like 108, 109 field of view. Field of view just controls how much of the actual like screen you can see, like how, how wide your field view is just max it out it's the best way to go distance meta range for this is between 260 and 280 i recommend you just put it on 270 but you can experiment with what you like height is the exact same thing meta range is between 90 and 110 once again i use the middle i recommend you just use the middle as well 100 angle meta range for the angle is negative three to negative five however the more and more i played the more i've come to appreciate lower camera angles musty uses a negative three most pros use negative four since i play mainly ones and twos and angle of negative three is really nice for me but if you play more threes i would recommend a higher angle because basically what angle controls is how much up and down of the field you see in 1v1 it's really nice to just have that zoomed in view whereas in 3v3 it's nice to see more of what's going on in the air so higher if you're mainly 3v3 player lower if you're mainly 1v1 or 2v2 player negative three to negative five is the meta range stiffness this is purely preference based i've seen a lot of like different commentary on this lethemir for example uses a max stiffness of one so basically when he drives his car doesn't shrink at all based on how fast he's going if you use zero your car will shrink and like time warp let's say like it, 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 it'll scale up and down based on how fast you're going heavily when you're down on zero stiffness i recommend you just go straight in the middle because it's 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 purely preference you can experiment with that i just use 0.5 swivel speed i recommend you max this out this is how quickly your camera looks around and i think it's nice to be able to look around super quick transition speed this is how quickly you switch between car cam and ball cam. Some people like high transition speed. I think you'll get motion sickness if you use really high. I recommend 1.1.0 or 1.1. Honestly, I, I just use 1.0. And then finally, invert swivel. I recommend you turn this on. This basically just makes it so that when you push down on the joystick, you actually look down. And when you push up, you actually look up. I, I recommend invert swivel. It makes more intuitive sense. So yeah, those are my camera settings. Uh, but I recommend you just, you just kind of copy and paste camera settings. You don't have to think too much about them controls on the other hand this is where things start to divert we'll talk about sensitivity first then we'll talk about bindings this is probably the most important part of the video and it's going to be the most custom to you so pay attention to this let's start with steering and aerial sensitivity so just like in a shooter where sensitivity controls you know how how quickly you have to move your mouse around to sense it's the same thing in rocket league steering and aerial sensitivity is how far you have to move your joystick for a certain amount of 
output to be registered. So it's like the input to output ratio. Here's what I recommend. The lower rank you are, the more important just basic consistency is and the less important speed is. So at the lower ranks, I recommend you start with a lower steering and aerial sensitivity. A good range to start at is anywhere between 1.0 and 1.4. Now, as you rank up, and if you look on Liquipedia, you'll see that steering and aerial sensitivities have started to rise in the pro scene. My theory is because the game is getting much and much faster and quick recoveries are becoming much, much more important. So my recommendation is as you get more mechanical and as you rank up, you increase your steering and aerial sensitivities. You'll see mine are closer to the 2.0 range I find that 2.0 is kind of the max I can control. So I use 2.0 steering and 2.0 aerial. But I recommend if you're a lower rank, you start out in that 1 to 1.2 range. And as you get better and better, you increase your sensitivity. I will mention, and this is kind of interesting, there was a study done. Flow State GG talks about it in one of his videos. Basically, the study was done on the topic of subtle variance. And what subtle variance is, is the effects of changing sensitivity minorly, just minor adjustments on actual muscle memory, how quickly your, your, I guess, hands or your muscle memory develops in a game. What they found in this like clinical, clinically researched study was subtle variance. So oscillating your sensitivity up and down a little bit as you play the game over long periods of time actually improves your control. They did this with, um, technically it was with a shooter. Um, it wasn't with Rocket League. They they oscillated players' mouse sensitivities as they trained this aim trainer game. And they found that the people who they oscillated got the muscle memory down faster than those who did it. So this is once again, why I recommend you slowly increase it over time. If that study holds, if there's nothing that refutes it, it's kind of kind of interesting. So anyways, steering aerial, work it up as you go, start at 1.0 and increase it because there's might be benefits to doing it. Finally, the only other control setting besides sensitivity that's important is dead zone. In fact, dead zone is like sensitivity on steroids. Basically, dead zone controls how far you have to move the joystick from the center to register an input. And so if you adjust this just a little bit, you'll feel a big difference in your game. Once again, just like with sensitivity, where like beginners, I say start lower, so that way it's easier to control and you can learn it. Dead zone is the same thing. The higher your dead zone is, the slower the input will be picked up, which means the better, I say, for beginners. So if you're a beginner, start high. And as you get better, you work this down. So ultimately your goal should be to work down from like 0 0.10, 0 0.05 is the most common. Important note, dead zone uh, seems to affect Xbox and PS4 controllers very differently. From what I've seen in the competitive scene, PS4 players almost always use very low dead zones, whereas Xbox players sometimes use higher dead zones, like closer to like 0.10, even 0.20. So if you are an Xbox player, um, that may be, it may be warranted to use a higher dead zone, but if you're PS4 or like most people, I recommend trying to get to around 0.05 over time for controller dead zone anyway. Hope that's not too confusing. Dodge dead zone, this is more preference. Basically it, it controls how far you have to move your stick to initiate a dodge to register a dodge. The only real application of this at the lower ranks is to protect you from accidentally backflipping when you fast aerial. Basically, if you increase this really high, you can pull down and fast aerial easier without having to worry about accidentally backflipping on that second jump, if that makes sense. So like newer players sometimes like to have this higher around like 0.8, I've seen the highest, but meta range is like between 0.4 and 0.8. I, I land in the middle, I use 0.5. That is section two, that's control settings. Now we're moving on to the final, like actually important section of this video, um, besides like a couple bonus stuff I'll go over at the end. And that is bindings. Key bindings are incredibly important in Rocket League. Why? Because as you get to the higher ranks, you need to do many inputs at the same time. At the start, when you just start playing, all you really need to do is like jump and front flip and boost sometimes. <laughs> but as you get better, you're gonna have to air roll while you jump, while you flip. You need to have all those buttons down. So what are my bindings? My bindings personally are Rizzo's controls. So I, I use my joystick to drive instead of having an accelerate and a decelerate button. It's not bad, it's not good, it's just different. I'd recommend you just stay stock and you use like normal accelerate and decelerate buttons. But the real things that matter are jump, boost, air roll, and power side. If at all possible, you wanna make it so you can jump, boost, power slide, and directional air roll, air roll left or air roll right, at the same time. Meaning like you really don't wanna have jump, boost, air roll, and power slide all, all on whatever, whatever this section of the controller is called. 
whatever this area is, you don't want to have all four of those buttons there. The most important things that you can do are jump boost and air roll all at the same time. So what I do is I put my boost on the back of my controller and I put my power slide on the back of my controller as well. I recommend you put both of those things in the back. Now, some people have gotten away with only putting power slide on the back of their controller and they keep boost on like circle or on something in this in, in this section next to their jump and their directional arrow. I don't think that's ideal just because you have to fat finger to be able to do all three at the same time and it's really hard. If you look at Liquipedia, you can find common pro keybinds to copy. Some pros just fat finger and they have boost and jump right next to each other, just like they're set on the default controls. That's fine. It's just a little bit harder. If you can, you, you can learn to get away with it just fine. But if you're brand new and you really don't have the muscle memory built up, put boost on the back of your controller. That's what we're seeing more commonly with a lot of newer pros coming in the scene. And I think it's just easier to navigate. Once you have that checked off and you can jump, boost, air roll, and power slide all at the same time. The only real other tip that I can give you with controls is make sure that your neutral air roll is on the same button as your power slide. That way, when you're like doing wave dashes or half flips or recoveries, it's all just binded to one button and you can seamlessly transition from the ground to the air. Basically, you know, joystick air roll only happens in the air. Power slide only happens on the ground. Might as well throw them on the same button. If you didn't know that, do that. And yeah, apart from that, controls aren't too deep. I mean, a lot of controls actually don't matter. The I really don't use like reverse cam or anything like that. I really only use camera pitch. Like I only really look around my camera. I don't use reverse cam. The only other thing is make sure you pick one directional air roll. Basically the way I see it is joystick air roll is the air roll that you want to use on the ground. It's going to be used for like air roll shots, recoveries, basically short-term aerials, just like little adjustments. And then directional air roll is what you're going to use for long-term aerials. Think air dribbles, flip resets, really complicated aerial mechanics. That's, that's what directional air roll is going to be good for. But yeah, pick a button. You're going to want a button for air roll left or air roll right. It doesn't doesn't matter which one it is and I recommend you put them on one of these two buttons here either square or circle on PS4 hopefully whoever's editing can translate that to Xbox <laughs> okay that was a lot of talking I hope this is not too too boring because we're almost at the end and this stuff is actually important so I'll, I'll do my best to wrap it up quick here finally for interface um really most of this stuff doesn't matter at all the only thing that matters here is that you increase your nameplate scale because the higher nameplate scale easier it's going to be to spot opponents yeah that's, that's really all to say there and the last important section is of course video settings video settings actually matters a lot if you're a comp player Player, listen up this is what you want and this is what i've learned from a lot of playing for resolution you want to have this on 1080p if at all possible if you have a 1080p monitor because you just want pixels to be crisp you want to be able to you know differentiate the ball from the wall or the other player when you're looking downfield at a long distance and very importantly you want your display mode to be on full screen and your v-sync to be off this is because full screen is the least latency method to play that makes sense uh and having vsync off will also give you the least latency specifically in terms of input lag input lag incredibly important like we were talking about you want your your movements to be snappy so plan full screen play with vsync off thank me later trust me this, this is what you want and then for visual settings once again i'm going to assume you're a sweaty comp player so you're going to want to put render quality on high that way you can differentiate those pixels at long distance and get really precise reads but you want your render detail to be on performance um and that what that's basically going to do it's it's going to turn all your advanced settings on the right side of my screen here to performance so that way you see everything in high resolution but there's no fancy strobe lights or lighting that's going to get in your way that's that's like the sweaty comp way to play that's how you see all the pros playing and uh, fps you want to turn this as max the highest that your monitor can output um Technically, my monitor can only output 240, but I get slightly less input lag when I play 360. And I can you can check this by just hitting F10 on your keyboard and seeing what your computer can output. Um, when I'm in free play here, my computer can output like more than 240. As you can see, it's like 300. And that's mostly because I'm recording. If I wasn't recording, it'd be outputting even higher. So I uh, increased it to 360, even though my monitor can only output 240 just to reduce my input lag. I really care a lot about that at the high, high ranks. It does, it shouldn't matter for you too much. Put it at 240, put it at 360 or uncap it. If you literally have like a 3090 Ti or 
just the, the top, top stuff. Yeah, that's that's basically my feedback. You can test using the F10 shortcut and see what your PC is able to output, but I just recommend 360 or 240. Sweet. Apart from that, I think that covers it, guys. You can bind chat uh, chat shortcuts if you want, if you want to be able to tell your teammates that you're going back right or back left on kickoffs. That's really the only thing I use it for. I use it for on your left and on your right. Apart from that, all, all, all this stuff is personal preference. But okay, I know that was a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to rewind. Or if you want more custom info, you should definitely ask away over in my free Discord server. If you didn't know, I actually run Rocket League's largest free improvement Discord, and we've got tons of coaches and other players there that are always active and down to help out. So if you are stuck, just hit the first link down below. Otherwise, I'll have another settings video linked on screen here that has more info. Thanks for watching, guys.